All right. Picture this for a second. A single, massive missile slowly rolls out from a camouflaged underground tunnel, deep in the heart of central China. Just 20 minutes later, that same missile could unleash a volley of 14 individual warheads, each one precisely aimed to obliterate a different major US city. And here's the kicker, right now, absolutely nothing in the American arsenal has a guaranteed way to stop it. This isn't some sci-fi nightmare, folks. That missile is very real, it's highly mobile, and it goes by the name of the DF-61. It's the kind of weapon that changes everything. The world got its first public glimpse of the DF-61 at Beijing's impressive 2025 Victory Day Parade, a display designed to send a clear message. But make no mistake, the Pentagon hasn't just been casually observing, they've been tracking this beast for years. Its official range? A staggering 15,000 kilometers. Let's put that into perspective. That means virtually every major capital, whether you're talking New York, London, Berlin, or Tokyo, sits squarely within its bullseye. This isn't your grandfather's ICBM. Unlike some of China's older, clunkier rockets that needed days of preparation and fueling, the DF-61 is solid-fueled. What does that mean in practical terms? You can essentially open a barn door, pop up the launch canister, and have it ready to fire in a matter of minutes. This isn't a fixed target either. A monstrous 16-wheel transporter erector launcher, or TEL, carries this missile along China's vast highway network. Imagine the challenge. An adversary can't possibly know where this mobile missile base will emerge next. From a distance, the launcher might look like a beefed-up version of its predecessor, the DF-41, but satellite photos reveal something crucial. The canister itself is a full two meters longer. That extra space isn't just for show, it's precisely enough room to pack in additional warheads or, perhaps even more unsettling, sophisticated countermeasure pods designed to confuse missile defenses. Analysts at the Center for Strategic and International Studies CSIS, have aptly dubbed it, the silo on wheels. Each one of these trucks isn't just a vehicle, it's a self-contained mini-missile base, capable of disappearing into a railway tunnel or hiding discreetly under a bridge. This extreme mobility isn't just a convenience, it translates directly into survivability. And in the high-stakes game of nuclear deterrence, survivability is the ultimate guarantor of China's strategic might. Now, let's really unpack the truly scary part of this weapon system. The DF-61 is reportedly designed to carry anywhere between 10 and 14 MIRVs, that's multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles. Think of it like a space bus, hurtling through the atmosphere at an insane Mach 23. Once it reaches its apogee, its highest point in orbit, it doesn't just drop off passengers, it unleashes a deadly payload. Each passenger is essentially a 300 kiloton nuclear bomb, independently guided to its own specific target. So, one single missile could devastate 14 different cities. But it gets worse. This bus isn't just a delivery system, it's also packed with tricks. It can release a flurry of decoys, jammers, and even mylar balloons cunningly shaped to mimic actual warheads. All of this is specifically engineered to blind, confuse, or simply overwhelm U.S. interceptors stationed in places like Alaska and California. The sheer payload mass of the DF-61 is estimated at around 3.6 tons. That's a lot of destructive potential. This massive capacity means it could carry a large number of smaller warheads, as we just discussed, or, if the rumors are true, a few truly monstrous 5-megaton city busters could fit comfortably under that nose cone. The solid propellant system gives the rocket an incredible burnout velocity of 7.2 kilometers per second. That kind of speed puts it squarely into low Earth orbit territory, strongly hinting at a possible fractional orbital bombardment system, or FOBs, mode. And if it employs FOBs, that's a game changer. FOBs means the weapon doesn't follow a predictable, textbook ballistic arc. Instead, it could dip southward, circle the globe, and approach the United States from an entirely unexpected direction, say, the Gulf of Mexico. This is a crucial detail because America's current missile defense systems, like Patriot and THAAD, were simply never designed to cover such an approach angle. Couple this orbital flexibility with its road mobile launcher, and you've got a system that can theoretically shoot, 
scoot, and reload inside of an hour, assuming, of course, that reload canisters are strategically pre-positioned. In essence, the DF-61 isn't just an incremental upgrade. It bundles unprecedented range, devastating payload, extreme mobility, and advanced penetration aids into one terrifying package. No previous Chinese ICBM could ever claim such a comprehensive threat. So, why is Washington DC practically losing its collective mind over this? Well, let's face it, the United States still largely relies on its 1970s-era Minuteman III for land-based nuclear deterrence. The Minuteman III carries just one warhead, sits in a fixed, easily identifiable silo, and follows a textbook parabolic trajectory that both the Russians and the Chinese mastered tracking decades ago. It's a relic, albeit a powerful one. While an upgrade to the Sentinel missile is planned, it won't even begin deployment until 2029, leaving a significant, worrying capability gap. Meanwhile, every single DF-61 launcher can disperse itself across thousands of kilometers of China's vast territory, making preemptive destruction a logistical nightmare, if not outright impossible. Admiral John Aquilino, head of U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, didn't mince words when he told Congress that mobile missiles are the hardest target set we face. Why? Because you've got to find them, fix their precise location, and then finish them off before they can launch. That's a chore that could demand hundreds of advanced satellites and round-the-clock bomber patrols, a monumental task that stretches resources thin. Even if a launch is detected, current U.S. interceptors are optimized for limited, perhaps rudimentary, attack from a rogue state like North Korea, not a saturation salvo from a sophisticated adversary, especially one deploying decoys and jammers. The math, frankly, is brutal. 14 MIRVs times an estimated 30 launchers equates to 420 potential detonations. That's more than enough to overwhelm the ground-based mid-course defense system and still place a devastating number of nuclear warheads on target. Strategists are deeply worried that the DF-61 hands Beijing what they chillingly call, escalation dominance. This means China gains the ability to credibly threaten massive retaliation with a weapon that is itself incredibly difficult to neutralize. In a crisis scenario over, say, Taiwan, leaders in Washington might find themselves hesitating to intervene, weighing the potential cost of losing Los Angeles, Denver, and Chicago all in a single afternoon. That's a terrifying calculus. So, is the DF-61 truly unstoppable as the title suggests? Well, nothing in warfare is truly unstoppable. The real question is always about the price you're willing to pay to stop it. The Pentagon, to its credit, is aggressively pursuing a layered approach to counter this evolving threat. First up, space tracking. A new, advanced overhead persistent infrared OPIR, constellation is being developed. Its job will be to spot those elusive mobile launchers by their telltale heat plumes and then relay those cues to a new generation of hypersonic tracking satellites, which are set to launch next year. It's a complex digital cat and mouse game played out in orbit. Then there's the long-range kill chain. The idea here is that advanced B-21 bombers, armed with new stand-in strike missiles, could theoretically hunt down and destroy these TELs inside mainland China. But let's be absolutely clear. That means striking Chinese soil, a monumental act of escalation that no president would take lightly, and one that carries immense risks of spiraling into a wider conflict. Next, missile defense. The next generation interceptor, NGI, program promises to add up to 64 additional interceptor silos in Alaska by 2032. Sounds good, right? But each of these advanced interceptors costs a staggering $110 million, and you might need two, maybe even three, to reliably take out a single incoming warhead, especially one cloaked in decoys. That's an astronomical investment for uncertain returns. Another avenue is directed energy. Imagine airborne lasers mounted on drones, designed to burn out booster stacks during the missile's most vulnerable ascent phase. It's a tantalizing prospect, but atmospheric conditions, clouds, dust, even turbulence, play absolute havoc with beam quality and effectiveness. The cheapest, most diplomatic countermeasure might just be arms control. However, Beijing has, so far, steadfastly refused to join New START negotiations, arguing quite reasonably that its arsenal is still significantly smaller than Washington's or Moscow's. But here's the rub. 
If DF-61 deployment eventually passes the 150 launcher mark, you can bet the US Congress will exert immense pressure on any administration to abandon arms treaties altogether and greenlight the production of even more American nukes, inevitably reviving a classic, dangerous arms race spiral. For now, American commanders are leaning heavily on deterrence by punishment. Forward deployed Ohio-class submarines, stealthily patrolling the world's oceans, each carry 192 independently targetable warheads. This ensures Beijing knows, unequivocally, that any launch against the American homeland would invite unacceptable, devastating retaliation. It's the Cold War logic, updated and amplified for our hypermobile, technologically advanced age. The ripple effects of the DF-61's emergence are already being felt across the globe. Japan and Australia, for instance, are rapidly accelerating their own long-range strike projects. They're investing heavily in acquiring Tomahawk cruise missiles and advanced hypersonic joint strike missiles, explicitly designed to hit mobile launchers or other critical targets before they can pose a threat. India, ever wary of China's growing military footprint, particularly in its western reaches, conspicuously flight-tested its own Agni V Mir VED ICBM just days after the DF-61 parade, a clear signal of its own capabilities. Even Europe, often seen as geographically distant from these Pacific rivalries, has taken serious notice. NATO's Secretary General called the missile, a game-changer for transatlantic security, which is diplomatic code for acknowledging that European cities can now technically be held hostage from the other side of the planet. Inside China itself, state media frames the weapon as purely defensive, a necessary guarantor of peace achieved through strength. One recent Global Times headline perfectly encapsulated this narrative, DF-61 keeps hegemony at bay, neatly summarizing the party's consistent message that more nukes ultimately equate to more respect and security on the global stage. Russia, meanwhile, remains oddly quiet on the matter. While the DF-61's impressive range technically puts Moscow within striking distance, for now, Beijing and Moscow need each other far too much to counter what they perceive as Western influence. Expect to see more joint patrols in the Pacific as both militaries continue to test and redefine this new strategic geometry. If you want to understand the future, defense budgets often tell a clearer story than any crystal ball. China's official military spending reportedly rose 7.2% this year, but outside economists and intelligence agencies widely believe the real figure is at least double that. Add in a collapsing conventional arms export market for China, and it becomes clear that advanced missiles, particularly nuclear-capable ones, are becoming a lucrative growth sector for Beijing's burgeoning defense industry. U.S. Indo-Pacific Command estimates that China could field as many as 150 DF-61 launchers by 2029. That's enough to put over 2,000 nuclear warheads on wheels, making them incredibly difficult to locate and destroy. This projected number would, for the first time in history, vault China into quantitative parity with both the United States and Russia in terms of deployable nuclear warheads. Washington's response, predictably, is already being written into the fiscal year 2026 defense bill. We're talking about $7.5 billion earmarked for next-generation interceptors, another $5 billion for advanced space sensors, and a rather ominous, classified line item for advanced kinetic left of launch. That's Pentagon speak for sophisticated cyber and electronic attacks designed to fry missiles before they even have a chance to lift off. The ultimate wild card in all of this, of course, remains Taiwan. If tensions boil over in the strait before either side fully perfects its new arsenal of terrifying toys, we could very well witness the first truly nuclear shadow near peer conflict since 1945. The fundamental deterrent equation is rapidly shifting from the simple question of, can we hit back? To the far more terrifying one of, can we survive the first 30 minutes? And thanks to weapons like the DF-61, that question just became a whole lot harder to answer. So, 15,000 kilometers of range, 14 warheads, all delivered by a single, mobile truck. The DF-61 is far more than just another missile paraded through Beijing's streets. It represents a mobile red line, actively reshaping global nuclear strategy in real time. Whether it ultimately remains a deterrent, a silent guardian of peace, or tragically evolves into a deployed first strike force, will depend on a delicate balance of diplomacy, the avoidance of catastrophic accidents, and, ultimately, 
the defense budgets we choose to vote for. One thing, however, is absolutely certain. The era of small, survivable nuclear arsenals seems to be over. Big, mobile, multi-warhead missiles are back, and they are unequivocally driving the next, potentially terrifying, arms race. What do you think about all this? Does the DF-61 actually make the world safer by ensuring a kind of mutual vulnerability, or does it dramatically raise the chances of miscalculation and catastrophic conflict? Drop your take in the comments below, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next deep dive.